Hey, what's up guys? It's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and today we're gonna to talk about the Hi-Fi-Man Aria Stealth. Now, as of April 2022, the Aria Stealth has an MSRP of $1,600, which is less than half of the Hi-Fi Min HE1000 SE behind me. Towards the end of this review, I'm gonna talk about how it compares to that, um, just to kind of give you perspective on what to expect. Now, the big change with the Aria Stealth is the Stealth moniker. Basically, they switched on the V2 version to Stealth Magnets for the Stealth Edition, or V3. The Stealth Magnets help with a couple things. One is the sound transparency, or acoustic transparency of the magnets. They claim that this helps reduce um, wave diffractions on the driver. So the magnets aren't interfering with the acoustic output of the diaphragm. Now, that did measure that way. Um, there's been people, I, I never got to hear the V2 Stealth, or, um, or sorry, the V2 Aria over the Stealth. So I'm not gonna try to lie and say this is how it sounds. There's some reviews out there that do that. Um, but the the measured differences from the Stealth versus the V2 is that the Stealth is inherently smoother as a result. The highs aren't quite as sharp. Now, the other advantage by going to the Stealth magnets is it actually helped increase efficiency. The 94 decibel sensitivity rating is phenomenal because depending on what kind of headphone amp you have, some headphone amps, one, either aren't that powerful or they don't do as well when they're being pushed to the limit. So if you have a hard to drive headphone, you either need to step up and pay for a more expensive headphone amp or just deal with the fact that you're not gonna get as loud or you may have some distortion or less dynamic range, etc. So the high sensitivity is nice for a lot of reasons and the Stealth Magnet technology was a big part of that. Now the frequency response of the Aria Stealth is eight hertz all the way up to 65,000 hertz, well beyond human hearing. And I found that when I was uh, testing it, both measuring it on the headphone rig and just through listening, the bass roll off happens below 20 hertz. It digs super, super, super deep, which I love because, you know, there are certain bass notes that you just, you want to be present and you can only do so much with EQ to boost that on a headphone that doesn't naturally produce this kind of sound. So I don't want to get too far into the sound quality just yet, but it's something important to note. The frequency response is phenomenal. Now they also kept the weight down. This weighs just over 400 grams, which considering the size of the headphone, um, the size of the drivers, the metal construction on the headband, etc. The weight is actually quite nice. Now the diaphragm on this planar magnetic is nanometer thick. Basically they say that if you put the diaphragm on a horizontal plane and looked at it from the side, you wouldn't be able to see it to the naked eye. The big reason why they do this is to help with the transient response. Um, I, I'll get into all the sound stuff soon, but I want to talk about the basic build and features of the headphone before we get into that. So the goal of all this technology, again, is to minimize the impact of using poor materials. You know, they've optimized the stealth magnet technology. They've used a more reactive uh, diaphragm to keep up with whatever you're asking it to play. And all this results in a more transparent listening experience where the headphone is doing exactly what you're trying to get it to do. Now, to help with openness and airiness and soundstage, HiFiMan has this patented window shade system, basically these little horizontal bars that you see running across the headphone. Now there's interesting that it's not quite in line with the driver uh, itself. When you see the stealth magnets behind it, it's just slightly off. It's nothing, to me it doesn't bother me enough because at the end of the day I'm listening to it more than I am looking at it. Uh, but it's interesting that it's slightly offset. I'm not sure if that's just a, an intentional design because of the way the drivers are built, um, but just something I wanted to point out. So the comfort of these is good, and I'm gonna talk about a couple things you can do to change that because some people may like or dislike the way these feel. The clamp force is actually fairly strong. Now because of the ear, the yoke design, the pressure is getting put in the center of the ear cup. Once you wear these, this obviously, because these are so large, they come down and they actually can touch the back of your jawline. Some people don't like that, and when you couple that with the stronger clamp force, um, it may lead to long-term discomfort after several hours of use. Now, I'm just saying that because I can feel what I feel. My, the way my head shape is, or however it is that I wear these, I never had long-term discomfort issues. The drivers are so large, or the cups are so large, that my ears breathe extremely well. Now, as far as the dimensions go, the ear pad opening 
is about three and a quarter inches long. You have just over two inches of width. And then if I go to the deeper part of the pocket, you're at about an inch and a quarter. So the ear pad cups themselves, the pads are huge. And because it's an open back, it breathes really well. And I didn't have like overheating issues. Now you can tell because this is a slightly stiffer pad and I'll show you the difference from a different one. Um, but this, you feel where the higher pressure points are. You can still wear glasses with these because they're memory foam, but they're just a little bit stiffer than what I typically prefer. Now you can buy this headphone, unbox it and just get going with the cable, the pads and everything. I'm going to, show you a couple other pads real quick that you can switch to if you want down the road because it's important to know if you're only concerned with this if everything sounds great but you're concerned about the comfort well there's a solution and it's usually between 80 and 100 dollars now i'll put a link in the description below for these pads um, because i've used them extensively and i think it's nice to have as an option this my favorite one this is from Deconi, by the way Dakoni makes custom pads for a lot of different headphones. I'm not making it a commercial here about Dakoni because it, they work on a lot of things, but um, they have several pad options for the Aria Stealth. Now, my favorite is this guy because it follows a similar design to the Aria Stealth's uh, stock pad. The stock pad has a pleather exterior and they actually switched to a nylon interior pad. So when you look at the inside, so you can see this leatherette on the outside here, then you rotate it and you can see this nylon. They do the nylon again. They wanted to have more acoustic transparency. They didn't want to color the sound at all. I actually find that it helps with breathing. Uh, your ears don't get as hot. And this follows a similar design. Now, if I show you the pad face a little bit, you can see there's a, a difference here. The, obviously, the Deconi ones here. Now, they have a similar look, so you wouldn't really change the, if you're concerned about changing the look of the ear, the headphone. It doesn't do it that much. The biggest thing I can show you is you can, I remember if you remember this test before, see how springy that is? It pops right back up. Now I show you on the Deconi pad. Look at the difference. Much slower. It's a softer, more plush pad. So this got rid of any of the pressure points I had on my jaw. So I don't want to spend too much time on this, but um, Deconi actually has some measurement graphs online because materials do make a difference. Ear pads probably have the biggest impact on your headphone than anything else, uh, um, as long as you're having normal equipment. You know, um, you're gonna notice a big difference with pads if you either switch the materials or after a year or two, they kind of break down over time uh, because you wear them a lot. Having an option to do a third-party pad, whether it's a hybrid, a leather, whatever it may be, is really nice. And the Deconi ones fit and are very, very comfortable. The one wire that's included in the box, which I have here, and I'll show you how long it is. It's not crazy long, but it's long enough where if you're sitting you know, near a desk, you can still plug in no problem. You can swap this. And again, I'm going to show you a cable here in a moment, but I found that the connections on this are really, really nice. They, let's see if I can get that to focus. Come on camera. There we go. So gold plated. And then of course you have your 6.35 millimeter or quarter inch. If you're going by Imperial measurements, um, this, they switched to a nylon material with this. It's a crystalline copper cable. There's some memory to it. Um, some people like, or don't like feeling that stiffness of the wire. I actually don't mind this cable because it resists uh, tangling really well. So it's like I'm doing now. It's very easy for me to wrap this cable and unwrap it and not worry about uh, my cable tangling up on me. So that's to me, I prefer this kind of cable for what you get out of the box. If you need balanced or three or uh, three point five millimeter, you can switch them out. There's a lot of different cables online that you can use um, because HiFiMan uses the same plug on several headphones. So I did buy a replacement cable or a secondary cable because I wanted to have a balance connection for my uh, Stels. Um, and this is from a company, it's $24. I'll put a link in the description for Amazon. It's like Yukamu. Um, I may not be saying it right, but basically I, I think it's actually quite a nice cable. Let's see if I can get that into focus. There we go. So the plugs are really nice. They don't make any noise. So if you're concerned about uh, acoustic noise, rubbing on your shirt or anything like that, um, I didn't have any problems with it. I actually like the sound of this a little bit better because it's balanced. Um, if you have a fully balanced setup, you might be able to get a little bit more dynamic range. Most new amps nowadays, they're pretty quiet, even unbalanced. So it's not like this is getting rid of a hiss or issue on, on noise floor. Um, most modern tech's gonna sound good there anyway. All right, now it's time to talk about sound quality. My favorite part. Um, there's one thing I want to point out because I may put these on and off as I'm talking about sound and that's the adjustment on the headband. It clicks very firmly. 
Compared to the HE1000 SE, those are much looser. That was probably the only thing I wasn't crazy about as far as the adjustability goes. Um, I like that this is stronger because once you set it, you don't have to worry about locking it or anything like that. It does a great job holding its place. So anyway, the sound quality of the Arias Stealth is special from due to derivatives. <laughs> It's not like it's doing um, something so exceptional with the bass as far as a lot of bass and slams. So for someone who is a bass head and they want tons of bass, the Stealtha isn't meant for that. The same can be said about the highs. If you want the incredible high frequency response or you like it a little bit sharper and brighter, the Aria Stealth isn't that either. Now, what's really special about the Stealth to me is it does the entire frequency response curve, if you will, or in this case, almost a line, uh, extremely well. It has really deep bass extension, so if you're concerned about the deep bass, you're good there. If you're concerned about, and I'm going to get more in depth than this, don't worry. Um, the mids are incredibly smooth. They're, they have really nice texture to them. Um, I like this, the Aria Stealth because it works well for both male and female vocals. Um, so to me, it's how I'm leading up to something big, so I'm going to go into treble here. But the treble is, it's slightly elevated. You don't want a, a perfectly flat headphone. Uh, if you measured every headphone, it'd be perfectly flat. One, in theory, they should all sound the same. And two, they're not going to sound special. Not everyone likes that sound. A lot of people will dislike that sound. So the, uh, the highs are slightly elevated. Now, they're not as bright or sharp sounding as the uh, Aria's uh, V2 that came out last year. These are more smooth and refined and laid back. Now... The big kicker with the Aria Stealth is, uh, to me, the, the transient response. Um, because these have this nano-thin diaphragm, the way their magnet technology is, etc., the attack and decay, just like the HE-1000 SE, which also use stealth magnets, is insanely fast. And the re what's nice about that is you can still get exceptional detail retrieval without having to boost the treble to cheat it. So if you get... A fairly flat frequency response but you can still get an incredible amount of detail that's because the transient speeds are really good and the transient speed at, for those who don't know is is basically when they say attack and decay if the diaphragm is producing a, um, a sound and as soon as the sound stops decay is how fast that diaphragm is getting back to zero or your nominal standard state where it's ready to produce the next note and fast transients are really what separates high-end headphones from cheaper stuff. You can have a, a $200 headphone that produces a ton of bass. Doesn't mean it's good bass. What the Araya does, it's kind of like a, it's almost like a, trying to think, it's, you're, it's like you get the best steak in the world, but it's not a huge steak, and it almost makes you appreciate every single bite more. It's not pushing out so much bass that it's like, it's taking over the track. It's there. It's extremely present. It's not going to have the slam and kick uh, of a Focal. If you're looking at like the clears for, I think those are 15 or 1600 too. So there's dynamic drivers, of course. They just, they all have different characteristics in this price range. To me, I, the big three in this price range are the Focals, um, the HD 800S and the Aria Stealth. Now, there's a ton of great headphones from 1,000 to 2,000. I'm sure I'm going to be listening to more of them uh, in due time. Um, I've gone to Cam Jam and demoed them, but that's not enough time to really get familiar with these. So what the, the HD, so the 800S is going to have a slightly wider soundstage than this. It also has more airiness on the treble. So if you want something brighter and maximum detail under 2,000, that's what the, 800, uh, the 800 is for. Now, when you look at the, the bass and the slam, if you just want hard hitting bass at the sacrifice of some of the detail retrieval and the transient response that this has, then the Focals are gonna be better for you. What I love about the Stealth is it basically does everything right, or the Aria Stealth, I should say in this case. And what's super important is you can have fun with a lot of different genres. You can have fun with a lot of different equipment to modify the sound to kind of fit what you're in the mood for. When you spend this kind of money, you a lot of people try to buy something that's, you know, this price range because it's the their top investment. This is can be end game for a lot of people. Now, admittedly, uh, for those of you who are watching this, you probably have more than one headphone in this price range. Uh, you may. 
And if you do, you'll realize, you'll know and accept this is kind of an addictive hobby. Uh, it seems to never end, and I find every headphone has their own unique, fun properties to it. So, what I love about the Stealth is, regardless of what you're doing, whether it's listening to rock, watching a movie, playing a video game on it, um, you know, you're listening to critical listening in a quiet environment, or you have a lower quality tracker or live performance you're watching on YouTube. These are very, very forgiving in a huge range of audio source quality and amplification. They're also very rewarding when it comes to detail retrieval and the reproduction of sound to make them sound rich and full and um, honestly just e exceptional sound. They've really absolutely crushed this. I mean, I just clicked my pad back in because I, I switched it earlier. Um, I, I think that it, to me is super important because if you get uh, one headphone, let's say you got the HD 800S, it's gonna be incredible with certain things and rewarding and I'm sure you'll love it and some people may have both, but you'll have those tracks where you wish you had more bass or the highs are almost uh, sibilant. You know, the, the upper end of a female voice is starting to hurt your ears and they have harshness to it. That's not a problem with the Aria Stealth. And you know, so there's an old song from uh, Portish Head. I had to check the name. So there's an old song by Portish Head called It Could Be Sweet. It was recorded in the 90s. It has an insane bass track. And then her voice comes in, and I don't know if you've ever heard Portish Head before. They don't have the best production quality as far as the frequency response. It's an older recording, but she can be a little sibilant and sharp in that track. And uh, I was doing that song mainly for the bass test because of how fast that bass is, but I could listen to it fairly loudly on these without hurting my ears with my headphone setup. And there's a lot of headphones out there where that part would just really hurt your ears. It's almost ear piercing if you have the wrong headphone or amp DAC setup. Now my go-to, I reviewed this recently, my, my favorite DAC right now is the Denifrips uh, Aries 2 or Aries 2. Uh, it's an R2R DAC and the Aries 2 to me give you gives you an incredibly wide sound stage. Um, the detail retrieval of, of that is phenomenal, which means it scales well with higher end headphones or speakers, you know, headphones such as this. So, and then the amp side is where you can play around some things more too. Now I hooked this up to $200 amp DAC combos. It played great, it sounded great, but when you step up to a thousand dollar plus amp DAC combo, um, the headphones will still reward you. So again they scale with a lot of different equipment so if you like to play around with things and kind of get a fresh experience this is kind of like one of those headphones that just always is ready to do what you want it to do and reward you at the same time the other one i used i have the uh, i don't know if you could see it behind me uh, these guys here those are the uh, burson uh, funk and fun now the funk they actually both have uh, swappable op amps and i have some here so what's cool about the those amps is they have they use you know solid state op amps of course but if you want to mess around with the sound and have a little bit more detail have a, a more lively jolt of music you can swap it out to a sharper more detailed op amp and then all of a sudden these headphones are woken up a little bit more and it kind of changes the listening experience so i'm not going to get too far down that path because i'm sure i i spoke a long time about this headphone um but at the end of the day i think the fact that this does everything exceptionally well, but doesn't necessarily excel or lead in one particular um, area of, of measurement or performance, however you look at it, is what makes it special. So being good at everything without being bad at anything is a special trait to me. And the most important thing with this is your, your analytical uh, production of sound. It, it's very, very detailed and clear and accurate, um, but it's, I mean, it just, it still sounds phenomenal. The bass is so, so good because it's so fast and deep. And I find that, um, every single song, whether it's a, an acoustic, uh, classical music, a female or male vocalist or both, it just, it always is up for producing this incredible listening experience. So I mentioned the HE1000 SE and I almost forgot. Um, the HE1000 SE is... It kind of changes what this philosophy is. It's still a stealth. It's still fairly acoustically transparent, but it's even more analytical and it presents even more detail to a point where it can punish you if you don't have the best quality source. Now, if everything is perfect, yes, those are always going to sound 
better, at least uh, that's subjective too, right? Um, they have a little bit brighter, more open top end. So if you want the maximum amount of detail and presentation, I find that these have a similar feeling base or sounding base because the highs aren't necessarily as sharp or lively as the HE 1000s. These can almost seem like they have a, a slightly more bass presence when in reality it's just because the highs are a little bit stronger on the HE 1000 SE. So if you're an analytical listener and you're trying to get every last possible detail of notes of your music that you're listening to, whether it's you know, again, piano, you want to hear the background parts of the production because you're you're really into, uh, I guess, hearing what almost like a live set sounds like. Um, the HE1000 SEs is what you're paying for for over double the price. It's just that extra edge of detail retrieval that the Aria is still excellent at, or the Aria, sorry, um, that the Aria is still excellent at, but not necessarily as good as the HE1000 SE. I think that under $2,000, this has to be one of the best headphones you can buy on the market. To me, it, it looks absolutely stunning and every angle i like that it's all black um it sounds incredible there's really i don't feel like anyone that owns one of these after you listen to it for a bit as long as you pair it with the right setup you're not going to be disappointed um they're just a phenomenal phenomenal headphone it's been my number one used headphone for the past couple months since i got it so um anyway i hope you found this review helpful I'll, like i said i'll put links in the description below in case you want to purchase this uh, to make it easier to find. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, we appreciate any comments or support you've given us. Our channel's grown a lot, so I can't thank you enough for the support. And uh, with that being said, I'll see you next time. Bye.